Today I'm in the West Desert of Utah to try some historical loading of a Colt cap and ball revolver. I'm Dustin and you're watching Guns of the West. I get a lot of questions in YouTube comments and also in private messages about how these Colt cap and ball revolvers were loaded back in the 1800s. Today, we use uh, lubricated felt wads between the powder and ball. Some people like to use fillers like cream of wheat or others in between the powder and ball. There are a lot of different ways to do it. If you were to ask five people how it's loaded, you might get five different answers. And today we're going to take a look at how it was done back in the 1800s with Colt's instructions. Now what you're looking at is a photo of an instruction sheet for loading Colt cap and ball revolvers. And this is found in the book, A History of the Colt Revolver by Haven and Belden on page 117. Now I won't, for the sake of time, go through reading all of this, but you're welcome to pause the video and do that. But let's take a look at just some of the points here in the instructions. First it says, first explode a cap on each nipple to clear them from oil or dust. And a lot of us already do that. One thing I wanna point out here, you'll notice it uses the term nipple. Some people think that was not applied to these guns until modern times, but there it is. They weren't not only called cones, there it is being called a nipple. It talks about the hammer being pulled to half cock to free the cylinder. It says a charge of powder is then placed in one of the chambers, keeping the barrel up and a ball with the pointed end upwards without wadding or patch is put into the mouth of the chamber. So there's something interesting, no wads, no patches. And when it says the ball is pointed end upwards, that seems to imply that they're using a conical bullet. Although I'm actually going to be using a round ball today in my shooting, and I'll be doing this on a 36 caliber 1851 Navy revolver. Uh, percussion caps are placed on the nipples on the right hand of the lock frame. Of course, we know that, and I'll be using Remington number 10 caps today. Now, I want to look at the second paragraph. It says, it will be safe to use all the powder the chambers will hold when loading with the flask, leaving, leaving room for the ball, whether the powder is strong or weak. Fine grain powder is best. Now, interesting there. It says it's safe to just use all the powder the chamber will hold. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to just fill the chambers on that 36 caliber navy right to the top. And I've measured that volume and it's about 27 grains of powder. And it says here, fine grain powder is best. Oh, that's great, it's a 36 caliber and I'll be using 3FG powder. So you're going to see me fill the chambers with powder, then I'll put a ball on and just cram that powder down until the cylinder can turn without being hindered by the ball. Well, let's go out and give this a try. So I'll go ahead and fill a chamber completely with powder. Oh, got a little excess, so I'll just brush off. And you can see that is now level with the top of the chamber, so now we'll just add a ball. For the ball, I'm using a .375 diameter round ball, so I'll just press it onto that powder. Then I'll pull down the loading lever and just cram it. And Colt's instructions were just to cram it down until the ball can clear, which now it does. So now I'll just repeat, I'll load up a total of five rounds, I'll finish off camera, and we'll see how it performs. Well, I've got five shots loaded up, so let's go see how it performs with this historical load. Well, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video today, maybe even found the information helpful. Don't forget to click that like button down below and subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos. And if you look at the description, you'll see where to find me on social media and where you can find Guns of the West products. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.